Well, see, the sweating stopped when I pulled the number because I thought, well, I won't get to preach tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought, oh, wow, I've got this, but I'm sure time's already started. Um, how are y'all? Good. Great. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray, too. As I just feel like I need it. Lord, I need you tonight. I know that you know that. I know that you... You know me, Lord, the better than I know them myself, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for being you. I thank you for loving me in spite of who I am. I just thank you, God. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this pulpit, this place, and my pastor that I've got to, to learn under. I just, I just thank you, Lord, and ask you please use this the way you present it to me and just speak through me and get me out of the way, Lord, and uh, hide me behind your cross. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to be in Genesis. Starting off here, chapter 22, and for this six and a half minutes I got left, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what God did with just a, a bunch of dumb wood, and uh, it'll bless you if, you if you let God speak to you because it, it blessed me, and we're going to be in uh, Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. That's a mighty fine answer. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I'll tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Okay? God told him to take his son and go offer a sacrifice. Yep. And Abraham said, All right, Lord. And he went and gathered up the wood. And that, that the, it, I can't get my mind around it. We did a skit about it and everything last year. And I'm telling you, there's, there's something to it. But he gathered up them sticks and they got over there and he left the, the bunch that had traveled with him and it took just him and the boy. Up there. They went up there, just them and God. Amen. And they got up there. And he took, and Abraham started, he, he got his rocks, and he started making them in that form. Something that was pleasing to God, right? He just yeah. them up there. And he took everything, and Isaac was wondering, he was wondering about the sacrifice, and he was like, Dad, we've got all this stuff. We've got wood. We've got fire. Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. Yeah. But listen, let's get this picture. He, made, he got them rocks stacked, and he got the wood, and he laid it up there. And this wood wasn't unlike any other wood. This wood was probably dried out, dead looking, something that'll catch fire quickly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? He laid it up there. There's nothing significant about this picture. But when he took his only son, yeah. and he laid him on it, yeah. Instantly, it's like a ripple through time. That became an eternal picture right there in the very first book of the Bible of what God was going to do for yeah. all mankind. Yeah. This now, God's word will never pass away. It will heaven and earth will pass away. His word will endure forever. Through obedience, you can almost see God staring down there like Isaac, you're doing good, son. You're doing good. Yeah. Go be it. He's got the wood. He's carrying the wood. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. He's carrying the wood. Yeah. And you can see God, you're doing good, son. Just keep on. Good. Just keep on. And then you can see him urging Abraham on. You're doing good, Dad. You're doing good. Just, just keep on. You're almost there. You're almost there. It's almost there. They didn't have a clue that this was going to be a picture for all eternity. But I mean an eternal picture. It will never change from what it is. He laid him on the altar. And it will forever be not Jesus Christ. Yeah. If I got time, I want you to look in Exodus real quick. Chapter 3. It's just a bunch of dumb wood. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the backside of the desert. I'm assuming that's a pretty rough spot of the desert. I'm just, just pausing there. If you're in the desert, I assume that's not where you want to be. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. I wish Patrick was here tonight. Because the whole time God had this on my heart, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I don't know if it was impactful to anybody else, but probably a year ago, about this very spot, doing a preacher's night, he preached on that bush. Yeah. On It was just a dumb bush. 
And it has never <coughs> let me. God has Amen. never let me forget Amen. it. I wish He was here. I wanted to hug Him tonight. I really did. Because this bush, there wasn't nothing impressive about this bush. There was a hundred of them probably out there. But this one had a flame, an eternal flame. Yeah. Probably no smoke. Why? Because smoke is a product of something being burned up. Yeah. If something's not being consumed, it don't burn. The Hebrew children, they got through it. They didn't have no smoke. Yeah. Right? There wasn't nothing being burned up that day. Yeah. There wasn't nothing burning here. But there was a bush. On fire, and listen, he probably had to look at it for a second because it caught his eye, but he had to take time to notice that it wasn't going nowhere. Yeah, right. There wasn't nothing impressive about a burning bush. He yeah. probably lit one on the way in. It might have been chilly that morning. I don't know. I ain't been in that desert. But this one, he caught his eye, and he approached it. And as he approached, he heard something that he'd never heard come from a bush before. It's never had a conscious thought. Okay? It's never had a mouth to speak. But as he turned and he approached, he heard something call out. It said, no, hold up. Before you take another step, cast them shoes off of your feet. You're on holy ground. Why? Because even a dumb bush is something when God falls on it. This fire was special. God had fallen on the bush before Moses showed up. This bush was one of the doing whatever a bush does. And all of a sudden, the light got shone around yeah. it. And it's thinking, what has happened to me yeah. now? And then Moses started catching up. And before long, Moses looked like an idiot. He's standing there. Anybody else could have seen it. He's sitting there arguing with a talking bush. Yeah. All right? That God's all over and fixing to show him how he's going to deliver his people yeah. and be a permanent picture of something great. This was the start. Yeah. Arguing with a dumb bush. It's amazing what a bunch of dumb wood can do. I'm going to skip my next one because I've, I've got to be out of time. But if you'll look in John chapter 19. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. This one, it got me. Verse 1, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged Him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on His head. And they put on Him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote Him with their hands. Man. Verse 6, When the chief priests therefore and officers saw Him, they cried out, saying, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye Him and crucify Him, for I find no fault in Him. But we find out down here in verse 16, they delivered Him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led Him away. And He bearing His cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Golgotha, where they crucified Him and two other with Him on either side. And Jesus in the midst. Amen. Once again, we find a bunch of dumb wood yeah. that's been formed a hundred times. They had perfected crucifixion. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was not the first crucified. No. no, they had time to get it right. They messed it up a few times before. Probably didn't quite get enough shouting like they liked. But they got it right. Yeah. And then they had two others with them. And all three of these probably come from the same forest. There wasn't nothing really different about them. Matter of fact, luck of the draw, which one he got to bear. Mm. Nothing different about them. But they put them two up, one on the right, one on the left. When they raised that middle one up, mm. and it yeah. clicked down, something was different. Yeah. The sky turned black. Yeah. There was an earthquake. Yeah. The veil was torn in twain. Salvation was wrought. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world that day, what was different? God got on it. God got on it. There was something different about that one in the veil. It looked just like the rest. It was cut from the same tree. It was cut from the same forest. It was all the same. But God got on this one. And it made me think, Rod, what's the problem with you? Why do I spend so much time being like Moses? And he's a mighty man. Don't get me wrong. I'm not Moses. I'm not. But I spend a lot of time arguing with God more so than Moses when I should be looking at the bush. Because that bush yielded itself for God that day. And Rod, what? Rodney's got a mouth. He's got two working legs for now. Some arms. He's got all kinds of features that God can use. But what could he do with what he did with a bunch of dumb wood? Yeah. Anyway. That's good. That's good. Be preaching. Good. Be preaching.